Good morning. I'm going to use a few different programs today and demonstrate how I personally take a layered design from Design Edge and import that into a program called Vinyl Master and use that program to make a mock-up of what that sign will look like for a customer. Um, and so let's jump right in. I'm going to use three different programs today briefly. Uh, Paint.net, which is what I used for raster uh, editing, uh, Vinyl Master, and then of course Design Edge. So first, this is the picture that I started with uh, to make this file for my customer. Uh, and they wanted a 24 inch wide sign uh, that was layered uh, to mimic this ring. And so what I did was imported that picture uh, after I did some cleanup in paint.net uh, and I imported that into Design Edge and then traced it and made the layers um, to be what I wanted them to be to match that ring. So what I want to call your attention to is that anytime I'm doing a layered sign I add a point of reference somewhere. And that lets me move things around, uh, but keep them in reference to one another. So if I wanted to see where this compass uh, fit you know, on this layer, uh, I could move it and use the C center of this circle as my reference. And as you can see, because when I traced it, I kept that circle in the same spot all the time, uh, it lines up exactly where it's going to go. So no matter which what layer I'm looking at, uh, it fits. So that's the first most important piece uh, for doing this with your signs over there. It makes lining them up a lot easier in Vinyl Master also. Uh, so the uh, second thing I want to show you is um, uh, come uh, when you are using uh, snaps in Design Edge uh, you can uh, there are a lot of shortcuts I left this thing out of line on purpose and I'm a little obsessive and so it's really bothering me. So let me show you how if you wanted these uh, to be at the same height. Uh, I, you draw a reference line from the line C center ortho snap across and now how do you move uh, this row of drawings up to be level with that one. So you select them all I'm going to M move, C center. Now how do I get it level? Do I, do I turn on my ortho snap uh, and, and try to get on the line to get it close? No. In CAD there is no close. It's math. It's either on off. Black, white, no, nothing in between. So you learn to use cheats with snaps. So I can use a P perpendicular snap. And then anywhere I click on this line, it moves it straight up. So you can use these reference points to move things around uh, the layers in relation to themselves or even uh, to use them to move uh, the entire drawing or the whole layer uh, so that it lines up the way you want. So what I'll do now is I've already labeled the colors that these layers are going to be. I'm going to delete uh, this group of them because as you can see they have these open paths and I have shown in other videos how to make this uh, look like this uh, and these will not show up correctly uh, in Vinyl Master um, so you have to uh, draw a circle the diameter of your kerf uh, and snap it to the endpoints of that and then offset it each direction so that it will show you your uh, kerf and I'm going to show you, I'm going to move it from the C center put that over here so you can see. So that's all that I have done which is to draw that open path as a small closed path uh, so that it'll show up uh, in Vinyl Master. So it's a little time consuming if you have a lot of those but that's really the only way to do it and uh, honestly after you do a hundred of them on a drawing you get pretty quick at it. So I'm deleting that. I'm going to F5 and that's going to zoom in so I can see that Here's all of our layers, uh, all with their own little reference circle and the colors. So I'm going to uh, 
Control E, I'm going to export that uh, and get in a folder I can find. And I'm going to do that. Okay, so then I'm going to open Vinyl Master. The program that I have is Vinyl Master DSR, which is the full uh, professional sign development version uh, without the ability to do the RIP export, which I think is, is uh, it's just something that uh, very large sign shops use, and it's not something I needed. Uh, but this has all the same features minus that one thing. Uh, and I think it's around $700. Um, the next version down is Pro, uh, and I think it's about $500. And it will do almost everything that this one will do. It has a lot of powerful text tools uh, for vertical text, uh, text on an arc, um, you know, a lot of things, and, and uh, a lot of perspective uh, text tools um, that Design Age doesn't have. And, and so I go back and forth on what I'm designing. Um, and, uh, and you can uh, use these tools. And then I can export that as a DXF. And so you wind up, I mean, Design Age is very powerful text-wise, but this is even more so. Um, so for fitting things to a path, I use Design Edge. For manipulating text to be a, a simulate perspective and three-dimensional stuff, I use this. So, let me get off that, uh, chasing that rabbit. Um, because I need to import uh, the uh, ring. And so that was this layered ring. And I put it right there. Now, Design Edge works in inches. And I will, um, it'll be a, uh, <laughs> It'll be an interesting day before I ever pay a thousand dollars just to be able to click to use millimeters. Um, so never mind that. In order to make this uh, into inches, because this program works in centimeters, all I have to do is go up here to my dimension, make sure my padlocks are on, and you can do some math in the command line just like in Design Edge, and I can take any either of those dimensions times. 2.54, which is how many centimeters are in an inch, and hit enter, and then I will have it um, all the appropriate size in inches in this program. Um, when you pull in a DXF into Vinyl Master, it is individual shapes that are not closed. Uh, to join those in Design Edge, you would push J. Uh, in uh, Vinyl Master, it's Y for combine. Uh, if you can combine multiple things together, um, unlike in Design Edge that keeps them, you know, individual, this program locks them together. So I could no longer separate those two words if I combined them together. Uh, not important for words, uh, but for these layered pieces, I'm going to select just the drawing and Y. I haven't touched my circle, and I'm careful not to move these pieces. And I'm just pressing Y, which is over here uh, in Combine. And so that gets me all combined and fills them solid. So <clears throat> at this point, uh, I'm ready to, to color things up the way I want them. Um, if I were doing a layer that was white, I can't see it. But if I leave my little circle, when I group it with that circle, I'll be able to see it. Um, just a little quick note, um, this one is going to be gold. This one's already black, so I, I'm ready to group that one. So I'm going to select it all. I can use Control G or press Group. And this one we want to be gold, but I'm going to cheat that one a second. So I'm going to pick this one that says silver, uh, and I'm going to tell you I want uh, that for my finish, I'm going to actually use a piece of brushed aluminum and cut it. So I'm going to go up here uh, to Object, Insert an Image Fill, and I'm going to go down to the bees and look, I have a picture of lots of stuff, of brushed aluminum. So I'm going to use Open, and that gave me an image fill, and it 
trimmed it to my vectors, so now that piece looks like a piece of brushed aluminum with shadows, lights, reflections. I'm going to select it in its circle, and I'm going to group it. This one I haven't done yet. It's gold. Fine with that. It's just paint. This one says gold, but what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to actually uh, make that into a piece of rusted steel just to kind of make it look uh, cool for our demonstration. And I have that in here as a sheet of Corton. It's uh, a lot of these images I get from Shutterstock, and I have a subscription there uh, to buy these. And let's see, A, B, C, O. So there's a, looks like a Corton, which is just naturally rusted steel. So I'm going to open that. And I picked the wrong one, obviously. So, image fill. Corton. There. Now you can see that that looks like a piece of naturally rusted steel. Select all that and I'll control G to group it. Now I've got my colors done. I'm going to delete my, my notes. I'm going to make sure that when I select these, I see that that selection square goes up and around that circle. And then I'm going to drag that up and make sure that the layer that stacks is actually in front of it because sometimes, like this one, you can see is behind it. So I need to use uh, control page up, uh, is going to. Uh, change it, I can uh, bring to front, forward one, the snap for, or the uh, hotkey for bring it up one is control page up, so let me control page up until I get it in front of it, I'm going to do the same thing with this layer, get it up there in front of it. Now the importance of having those little circles is, um, when I want to line this up, then see if I can make you see that menu. Um, I've got T for a line to top, right, and right up above, I don't know why it's putting it off the screen, it must be the recording, uh, is left, align left. So I'm going to align these top and left. T, L. And since that circle was up there, that's what it lined to for top and left. So now all of my layers are stacked just right. And so I can select all of that. I can uh, ungroup it. I can select my little pack stack of circles and delete them. And then I can select my drawing and group it again. And so you can see that in wireframe mode. You can see that uh, in actual solid field mode. Now, let's say you want to hang this uh, in front of a uh, brick wall. So now from this point, I control I to import and I get my brick wall. And I have a, a, a file saved with all my backgrounds in it that I can drag in already sized. But this is another Shutterstock image at the high resolution brick wall. Uh, but it's not the size. Uh, so I need to make this uh, 120 inches wide, uh, and then it will be correct. So now my sign is the correct size. I did that by measuring those little bricks, by the way, and uh, adjusting the size of my wall till it was correct. That way I can drag this over. I can use Control Page Up and get it in front of my bricks. I can put it where I want it on the bricks. And then I could actually go in here, and I can add... A shadow and I'll give it a 1% shadow each way and I'll increase it to an 80% and like that. So now then I have a little shadow behind it, gives it some three dimension on the wall and I can select all of this. At this point I could, if I were showing my customer like you uh, have the big show, TV screen in your shop, uh, you know this would more than handle uh, giving them a visual representation of their sign. If I were going to email this to a customer, uh, I would control E, I would export it uh, as a ring. And uh, you can change the resolution of it, but it's huge, so it's not an issue now. Uh, I'll tell it OK. And then if I were emailing it, I would come over here and I would 
open that in paint.net. See. Like that. And then I would probably uh, do a layer and import from a file uh, and get my uh, logo. I have a PNG of my logo that also has no background so that I can uh, see the brick wall through it. I put my logo however big I want. Put it right up there with the drawing. Grab it. Like I want it. Drop it. I can save that and send it to my customer. So I hope that helps and uh, gives you a little info on whether or not you want to uh, get hold of that program and use it in your business. But uh, doing a lot of custom file work, uh, I use it a lot and it's very uh, nice. Uh, my file customers like it because they can take that proof to their customer uh, and show it to them uh, and it, it's uh, easy for them to explain their plan and and get a good uh, price for their work so maybe that'll get you pointed in a way I personally you can't do the shadowing in uh, pro you have to have DSR for that uh, and it's nice uh, if you do LED lights you can add a white glow back behind it and simulate lights so you just have to decide I think it's the difference between the two is a couple hundred bucks so best of luck